This is Chuck Marfione from All Strings Nylon. I'm here in Ben Lomond, California with Luthier Kenny Hill. We happen to be in his uh, workshop right at the moment. And, you know, Kenny, you build an extraordinary guitar. It sounds great. It plays really good. And, and can you, you know, kind of just show us around and give us an idea as to what goes into building a Hill guitar? Yeah, it's just a snapshot here right now, um, <laughs> just, you know, a day in the life at this point. Um, there's a s certain amount of process going on. I mean, this is just, uh, you know, this is a very simple, simple tool. Uh, so this is a soundboard. It's uh, a double top. You can, cut, you can see the two layers here. There's, there's a spruce on the outside, cedar on the inside, and the uh, bracing has already been put on. The bracing, let's see, I mean it's assembled separately and then glued into place with a vacuum bag. The vacuum bags are back here, so suction is just, or you know, vacuum pressure is what holds that down. But this is a way um, that, uh, this is essentially just a clamping device. You see these things, they're spring-loaded. It's called a go-bar deck and, uh, you know, this is the way that a lot of uh, clamping on instrument making has been done for centuries. Um, it used to be that you'd use sticks, just sticks that go in and, and bend, but we made these spring-loaded things. So this is gluing these cross braces on. You can see they're just glued on square. I mean, they've got, this one's got a little curve to it. And then after it comes out of the clamps, you use a plane and chisels to, to shape the braces and voice them. This is actually, this is a bowl, this thing is. And um, so the double, t I mean, the top gets an arching to it, uh, just like you wood on a solid top instrument and the part of the way that that gets done is that this lattice which is just made up it's like made up like an old egg carton or something you just we make the pieces and they all go together I could show you probably I could find some sticks around but um, it goes together and then here is a way that we have of sanding an arch into it so uh, this is uh, this has just been sanded and it'll be released from here and then it goes in, when it goes uh, gets glued to the top it gets glued in a similar bowl like that and that's what gives the arch to the top. So, Kenny, you know, your guitars have a, a characteristic sound. It's a V Kenny Hill sound. And it's, uh, you know, what, can you give us an idea as to, you know, how you achieve that? Is there a certain amount of voicing that's done on this, uh, on this uh, uh, bracing here? Or is it more in the design <laughs> itself? Yeah, I'm not sure what voicing actually means in a way. Now, when I built solid top instruments, there would be a way where um, I would, you know, thin it more on the bass side than on the treble side and thin it around the outside edges and go both by caliper measurements but also by the flexibility of the particular piece of wood. And I'd think about that and then when you'd have the braces on you use a little plane or a chisel and and carve them down to a particular shape and you'd always fantasize that you could really control the outcome of what the instrument was going to be by that and maybe it's fantasy or you know maybe it's not maybe it's just what the subtle skill of being um, you know a luthier or you know a guitar carpenter is but uh, but now you know with the, the sort of fabrication of the double top with the way this bracing is glued up see you can see it's mixed spruce and cedar so in a sense that's voicing it's because when I made it all cedar maybe it was a little bit duller in the treble I wasn't quite thrilled with the treble so I added some spruce but I didn't want to make it all spruce because then it would be too edgy mm -hmm. so so here here we're just mixing it like mixing salt and pepper or something to get the right uh, to get to get what ultimately is that sort of purity of sound that I'm looking for and the balance between the bass and the treble. So yes, this bracing has got an arching in it like that um, to to help give the dome to the top. That's part of the voice. It's tapered on the ends. Well, I guess that's voicing, you know, just tapering it down to nothing there. But um, but basically, the real deal is the com combination of elements in the overall design. That's what it is. It's the designing. It's, you know, if you build a car, I guess you can tweak the idle a little bit or maybe change the timing. I guess you can't even do that anymore, you know. But it's the whole car running, and that's the way this is. It's, uh, it's not exactly what I just do at the end or something. It's the way it comes together from the very beginning. 
So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the porting on your guitars because I'm assuming that that really kind of plays a little bit with this top design as well. Well, it plays with the, it is one of the elements of the overall guitar. And the porting, um, you know, it works with a solid top, it works with uh, fan bracing, it's, it's its own element. It's one of the elements in the overall guitar. What I think it does, and I, 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 uh, I feel a little more confident in having at least a sort of a descriptive uh, version of what um, what the uh, the effect is, you know, if you if you look at it, I mean, the guitar is an air pump. That's what it is, and uh, you know, it's deflecting air through its motion here, but it's also deflecting the the the, the you know, it's it's vibrating, it's pushing, uh, it's pumping the air that's inside the guitar. So, if you look at it in the simplest things, which would be just a sort of an exhale and an inhale, if you look at it that way, there's this. This transient that is kind of congestion here at this point, and um, it's very much analogous to what a, a gas can does when you try to pour a gas can without the vent, is that it kind of glug glug glugs, um, and then you open the vent, and it just pours, and and that's essentially what I feel is happening here with the uh, with the sound ports is that it it allows the air to move more freely inside the instrument so it um, it it does kind of give you a, an audio window into the instrument but it's not that simple it's not just like you're hearing little sound waves coming out here closer to your ear it's actually changing the way that the top moves because it allows the instrument to breathe differently and uh, so it will work you know, when I started doing it, it like I, I mentioned another time, it was uh, Robert Ruck who was the one who sort of introduced me to the idea. Um, and when I started, I've experimented with different size holes, different locations. Nobody was doing it at the time uh, in the late 90s. Now a lot of people are doing it. But what I've discovered also is that, you know, you can port like a, take a, you know, a cheap, I uh, just plywood guitar or something and pour it and it doesn't change it that much. Um, but if you take a good guitar and pour it, it changes it quite a bit. It's, it's like the sensitivity of the instrument, of the overall instrument, is what's responsive to, to that. So, so it matters what the guitar is, how much advantage you get from this. Now I used to do it all, uh, all the time. I would make the guitar without ports because some people objected to them and I uh, said well okay I'd, I'd go along with that and then but when I so I never knew who I was going to sell the guitar to so I would retrofit the ports so it's like well do you want it ported or don't you you know but then at, you know it was a great opportunity to test the uh, effect because the guitar would be done all strung up finished play it. Like the guitar? You like it? Okay, let's drill a hole in it. See what you think. And just take your old DeWalt drill and a hole saw and bam, you know, takes, you know, 30 seconds. And uh, so, so there was a lot of experience with the before and after from that. And um, so I, I learned that I never wanted to unport a guitar. I couldn't. But, uh, but I never heard it do anything bad to the sound, it always improved it, so what the heck. Now I finally said, well, if you don't like it, okay, too bad, <laughs> you know, it's already done. <laughs> um, I can build a guitar without ports and there's some customers like, I don't know, some Japanese customers in particular that are just so conservative that they, they can't get used to this idea yet and, uh, and yet, you know, what I've seen is that in so many so many, you know, contemporary builders have adopted it as part of their deal that it's not rare and it's not, you know, it's not threatening anymore as it used to be.
So this is a signature, this is the beginnings of a double top here. And so you can see the rosette is, it starts out as just a regular, you know, this, this is what the top would be like if we were making a solid top instrument. You know, even this is a little bit thick and you put the rosette in it and, uh, and, and so for a traditional instrument this is still the same thing but with the, uh, with the double top you put the rosette in it as you would and then it gets down quite thin. It's just a little over a half a millimeter. You thickness sand it down? Yeah, just, just use a thickness sander to get it down. And, and of course you have to be real careful with it because uh, you put any dings and scratches in the wood, you don't have any more thickness to sand that <laughs> sand stuff out. out. Yeah. So either you have to, you know, not put any dings in or you, if you do, you got to just live with them. And that does happen. You know, it's an assembly, you hold it together with actually with just masking tape at first and then it gets glued on and this all gets gets clamped in the vacuum. Uh, that's how it gets put together. Now this stuff is, this is the Nomex. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's just a spacer is what it amounts to. And then it gets thinned. This is over thick now, but after it's glued on here, you go back through and thickness it again. And then, um, uh, then glue on the inner skin, which is, it doesn't have a rosette in it, but it's another thin piece of, of material. Now, what are some of the advantages of, go of, of going with the double top and then using the Nomex itself? Well, uh, the advantage is all about the sound and the dynamic qualities that it gets. And, you know, it's just like any other technique. I listen to some double tops and I think, no, that's not it. That's not what I want. Um, and. I, I frankly don't know why it does, it works. I don't know how it gives the qualities that I'm looking for. The qualities that I appreciate about the double top in my instruments anyway is that it has a really wide dynamic range. It'll respond both at a very delicate playing and it'll it respond to the strongest playing that you can do. And, uh, and, and the color range, you can adjust the color dark to light so it gives this kind of uh, super sensitivity to it, which is what, you know, I really like that. It's a quality that I really like. And although I can make a very beautiful sounding solid top traditional style instrument, there's something about the, the that, that, that heightened sensitivity that I get from the double top that has a greater appeal to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just pretty much gone only into doing that these days. I occasionally will make a solid top instrument for some reason, like a, a Torres style instrument. Mm -hmm. And, and it, can, it can be wonderful, absolutely wonderful instrument. But on the daily basis, you know, this has really got the, got the stuff.